Hey my squids, it is the prize winning squid and I am back with another speed paint for you guys. I know I've been gone for a little bit, but I have some reasons. Uh, today's speed paint is going to be the cast of Talia. So it's my comic series, I'm going to be launching it here soon, I'm doing a kind of a character sheet for the four characters is a double speed paint so I'm actually going to be working on both sets of characters I did them as two different files uh, so we're gonna look at that right now you guys are seeing me kind of sketch out Lyra I'm gonna sketch out Atticus I'm gonna do Zolani and Micah I will have all four of the cast but before we get to that let me actually rewind for one second because we will be bouncing around between both sets of characters, uh, sketches, rendering, everything like that. But what I want to kind of backtrack and talk about is why I've been gone. I have been gone, one, because I went on vacation. I finally went to Disney World, which I've been wanting to go to my entire life. Went there, magical, amazing. If you've never been to Disney World, please go. Uh, if you have never done any of the Halloween stuff, please do that because we went for that and it was freaking amazing uh the second thing i want to talk about is i have relaunched my website it was still up but i completely redesigned it from top to bottom it looks gorgeous now um so that is art by the prize winning squid.com go over there check it out i got a bunch of new stuff on there the third thing i want to talk about really quickly before we get into this speed paint i know it's going on in the background and you guys are checking it out and all that uh before we get into the speed paint i want to tell you guys that i have patreon now uh my patreon is actually dedicated and kind of about talia but there's a bunch of other stuff that i'm doing um i show you guys work in progress stuff for the comic that i'm working on give you guys some of my thoughts my struggles things like that when it comes to trying to work on a web comic um and also just kind of like showing you guys what the world's about and talking Talking about that a little bit uh, every month I also have an exclusive patreon only art piece that I do and I put out I have three of them up right now as of recording this video so you guys can go check that out it's patreon.com slash the prize winning squid please go check it out um, I, it's got, I got a ton of different stuff that I'm gonna be doing over there if you guys want to check that out all right so let's get back into Talia, the speed paint. You guys know uh, what I use is I use iPad Pro. Uh, I have a, a MacBook M1, uh, M1 Air, I don't have a Pro. Um, I use Clip Studio Paint. I use Procreate sometimes, but I'm pretty much Clip Studio Paint only at this point. Uh, so I use everything in Clip Studio. This drawing was done in Clip Studio. And as you guys see, I'm sitting here, I'm sketching, uh, doing everything that I gotta do sketching wise to kind of get this together. When it comes to sketching, I spend a lot of time sketching, changing poses, trying to figure stuff out, flipping canvases, uh, everything like that. Um, I will be kind of recording these slightly differently as I can. Uh, some of them I still have to just export straight out of the program uh, when it does record because lately Clip Studio has not been recording my exports. So that's been a little bit uh, frustrating, but it is what it is. Anyway, um, so I'm in Clip Studio Paint here kind of doing my thing. I'm using some hair brushes that I have to kind of sketch out the hair a little bit. I will say that I did this drawing months ago so there are things that have changed uh significantly between that time and now especially in terms of sketching how i do hair uh, a lot of a lot of things have changed art style wise but these are these are techniques that i think are still extremely valid and techniques that i think uh, are good to show off and one of the things that i'm kind of doing here as i'm putting the lines together and, and figuring out how I want to get my characters to look. You guys saw the green show up on the screen real quick. Uh, I use, uh, especially for something like this and the, the techniques that I'm using, the painter techniques that I'm using here, I use gradient mapping for these techniques. And so for me, instead of doing uh, grayscale, like I see a lot of people using, I can't really use grayscale. So instead I use green because I typically don't have the shades of green that I use uh, for my my gradient mapping. So I use I use green for that. So you guys saw that kind of pop up on the screen and and I go through and, you know, do that on both sets of drawings. So I'm going to be gradient mapping on this. I'll kind of explain how gradient mapping works when we're really getting to it and I can kind of go over it. But just a quick thing about Talia. So 
If you guys don't know, I, even though Tully is my first webcomic in current webcomic standards, I wrote comics pretty much from elementary school all the way through college, drew them. I had, I still have them. I have tons of just comics that I've created and everything. And it's been a medium that I've been wanting to get back to over the last 20 something years that I have not um, been in, you know, drawing and, and doing all of that. I went off and did music for 20 ish years. Uh, worked in some film stuff, did After Effects and uh, VFX work, and and I feel like all of that has just come back to me messing around with comics and really using everything that I've learned to jump right back into this medium and tell stories the way that I've wanted to tell them. Um, so comics, I'm not new to comics or anything like that. I'm not new to how long it takes to tell your tale and your story and get them out there. Nothing like that. Uh, but I am new to doing web comics and putting them out that way. So it's really exciting to kind of work on this comic, um, especially because this comic started as kind of my intro back into drawing. So Zolani and Micah, are the two original characters that I worked on. I'm currently sketching Zolani on the screen right now, but Zolani and Micah were the two characters I originally worked on, and they look very much different than how I originally envisioned them. And when I was first kind of learning Procreate and getting back into drawing and, and working in digital art, uh, one of the things I had kind of envisioned was uh, two women who, you know, were either assassins or heroes of some some sort, heroes for hire type of type of environment, type of vibe. And I wanted the two of them to uh, not just be professional, you know, together and go out there and, and handle business and do what's what, but also, you know, be in love and be a couple. And that ended up being Zolani and Micah. And I always had, always had this vision, this thought in my head where I would have the two of them um, sitting next to a tree with their weapons kind of stabbed into the ground and then they would just you know be reclining on each other and i've always wanted to draw that picture and it i feel like i can draw it now but at the time i couldn't and i ended up you know just kind of working on them and kind of working on the story and getting some ideas and then eventually i saw a, a cool top that i liked and i kind of mutilated it a little bit in my and you know put multiple tops together and kind of made it look the way I wanted it to look and out came Layra and then I was like well how does Layra fit into the story and so I started coming up with ideas for her and then I saw uh you know a, a cool pose from a, a guy with a certain facial expression and so I drew what ended up becoming Atticus and you know changed it and molded it and picked things that I liked about, you know, different hairstyles and different facial features for guys and stuff and ended up putting all that into Atticus. And I was like, okay, I have these four characters that I really like. I need to, you know, flesh out the story and everything. And so I sat down and just started writing a story. And I was, I was immediately kind of enthralled because I wanted a world where magic had checks and balances against each other and magic not everybody uses it but it affects everybody in some way so it's like even if you have a smartphone or if you have a car it's it's you magic basically makes that thing function so i ended up creating this whole tale about um Lyra, Lyra Orta is a zoologist, um, you know, biologist, botanist who goes out, catalogs animals, leads a very kind of um, quote unquote boring life. Uh, she goes, she travels a lot. So, you know, that's something that she's like super into and she loves animals, but she doesn't. Um, in terms of of adventure and the uh, magic and dragons and she doesn't do any of that. You know, she goes out, catalogs what she does, comes home, uh, you know, shows it all or not shows it off, but kind of, you know, puts it in books and things like that and then goes forward. And that's her life. And then one day she wakes up and the Blades of Oa, Blades of Oa are uh, very feminine kind of uh, people who... Um, don't necessarily assassinate, but they go after high priority and high value targets. So those people who can wield magic, uh, we'll say. And so they are now after after Lyra, and Lyra can't figure out why, because there's nothing about her that screams, come after me, I've done bad. So now she's on the run. She's trying to figure out why, you know, they're after her. One of her co-workers is dead. And 
you know, they're pinning the blame on her, but she hasn't even seen this co-worker in, in weeks at this point. So it's this whole, you know, debacle that kind of happens. And so Zolani and Micah are the two characters that are their Blades of Oa. They're the two sent after uh, Lyra. And there's something, you know, they, they kind of start figuring some stuff out and, and walking through it and all of that. So that's the, you know, the start of the tale that I'm kind of telling on my Patreon. And so with, with Patreon, one of the things that I'm, I'm wanting to do and kind of after is not just to show the process of creating a web comic, uh, you know, from somebody that admittedly has not done a web comic, but has done other comics and the idea of of doing this comic and bringing it forward and showing people like this is what I do and then releasing it every two weeks, releasing a page every two weeks, putting that out and kind of having the story out there and and trying, you know, both traditional ideas versus um, digital and online ideas and watching this thing kind of evolve, you know, as I as I keep, you know, uh, working on it and just going forward, uh, you know, with with Talia, because Talia is I, I, to say I love this story and I have tons of things mapped out and it's probably my favorite story that I've written and I've I'm in the habit of writing a lot of a lot of stuff so it's probably my favorite story I have written thus far you know in my life and that's saying a lot because there I have some stories that are my absolute absolute tops that I think about them all the time and I'm glad that I wrote them and I wish that I hadn't you know, written them so that I could read them separately, which is just a, you know, some people would be like, I never want to read my stuff. I'm like, no, I want to read my stuff. Like I'm interested in seeing what younger me thought was a good plot line. You know, like that's interesting. I'm, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. So I'm always just like looking at stuff like that and trying to, you know, reread stuff. Cause maybe I didn't publish something, but I reread it. And then I'm like, Oh, that was a good idea. I'm going to, I'm going to steal from myself and put that in this one. Um, but yeah, you know, Talia is just a fun story and I'm like excited to kind of show you guys what I'm doing with it um, in terms of what we're doing on the screen right now. So I got all the sketching and stuff out of the way, did line work. You guys see me um, actually doing the uh, gradient mapping now. So with gradient mapping, just kind of like going over it really quick, gradient mapping, what you want to do is is. It's all about values. It's not about the color itself. So how I set this up is I've done my line art and I've done my line art in kind of dark red. Uh, in this instance, I usually now use black, but there's a reason and I can kind of explain that a little bit later on. But with my line art here, I use dark red, did my line art and then across the line art itself, I'm or just the I, I create another layer and it's going to be my base layer. It's the green that you guys see here. On top of that, I put a layer. It's called shading. In the shading layer, I don't care specifically what color it is. I'm going to use a variation of the green, the base green that I'm you know kind of stuck on. But I'm I'm caring about the values. So as you see, I'm putting values down. I'm making things lighter. I'm going to make things darker. I'm kind of penciling in my my shadows and my lighting and my highlights here the reason is because on top of this layer i'm going to make another layer it's going to be my gradient mapping layer and it, for these i do several gradient mapping layers so i'm going to go over top and then on the gradient mapping layer for instance let's say Lyra. Lyra has a kind of uh maroon reddish top and so for her top i'm going to assign that the, the dead center of where the gradient map is, I'm going to assign that maroon reddish color that I'm, that's my base color. Everything's going to feed off of it to the left of it. I'm going to go values that are darker and darker and darker, depending on what, you know, what I'm trying to do. And then on the right of it, I'm going to do values that are lighter and lighter and lighter. And one of the reasons why I want to do that is because as soon as I assign all of this, it's going to look at the shadow layer that I have. And as long as I'm outlining just where I want that color to, to land, you're going to see all of that color and that gradient mapping show up without me having to mess with any of the color itself. And what I mean by that is I put this gradient map out there, assign it on top of the shadow layer that you guys are seeing now. So you're seeing the values, the lights, the darks, all of that. It's going to go on top of that layer and anything that's lighter, it's going to create uh, the color that I want 
and anything that's darker, it's gonna also create the color that I want. So the only thing I have to affect after that is I can go onto the shadow layer and I'm just gonna go and if I need something slightly darker, I'll just pin, I'll just make it darker. I don't need to worry about what color it is because wherever the gradient map is landing, it's going to assign that. So I'm doing, I'm gonna work on that now with Micah and Zolani. So Micah, they are, by the way, Micah is non-binary. When I first created Micah, uh, they were not non-binary. So old Micah is, uh, you know, she and her. New Micah is very non-binary. So Micah, as you see, I'm gonna pencil in their hair. I'm gonna make sure that their hair looks good. So this is, I, I work with the hair first and I don't do gradient mapping on the hair when I'm using this technique. I work with the hair first, make sure it looks good. That's all on a separate layer. And then I work with the gradient mapping. But so both of the both of them, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in, create a uh, shadow layer and a sh shading and a highlights layer kind of on top. So I combine those layers together. And I think that's one of the things that saves time and space and memory. Uh, so I'm gonna create a shadow layer and a highlights layer on top. And then that's where I'm gonna do my values. It's gonna be darker values, it's gonna be lighter values because what I'm trying to do is simply map out how the values look on this picture. And then my last thing that I wanna do after that is my gradient mapping for each color that I kinda of wanna use. Now, other people use it differently. You don't have to, you don't have to keep anything within that same color spectrum. If for instance, you wanted for your shadows, say you were doing um, metal or something. If you look at metal, metal kind of has when it's when it's darker or when it's lighter you'll see it's not all it's for instance like silver it's not all just like silver if it's like an armor or something like that it's not all just silver it'll be different colors you'll see blues in there you'll see some greens in there sometimes you'll see purples and teals you'll see different variations of color so say for instance you were working with uh some a piece of armor that you kind of want to mess with and on the darker end of that spectrum you didn't want it to be as gray you wanted it to be more um, teal so further along the left hand of the gradient map when the the line is up there and you're kind of working with it you can assign specifically that it is like gradient mapping is so so strong so for instance if i wanted on what i'm doing right now if i wanted the top the skin and the pans of Lyra, who's on the left side to be on the same gradient map, I could technically assign that, but just keep in mind that it's gonna go based on things like values. So if the darker values were uh, the skin tone color, where the dark values are across uh, this picture or across where I assign that gradient map where I want that to kind of like look at, it would actually go in and make those darker sections just skin tone color. And so you can do that. I like to separate them and it gives me a little bit more control. Um, and I, I do the same thing with like the lips, the, um, you know, the pants. I don't do it with the eyes. I, I did previously and I don't really do it with the eyes anymore. I can't. I like to go in and kind of like mess with the eyes specifically by themselves and kind of like bring them out and make them look really, really good. Um, but I do, I do it with the skin, the clothing, um, things like makeup. I will sometimes use it on, but I've been trying to go over top of everything else when I'm kind of applying makeup, kind of doing the way I have to look at makeup is the same as how you would look at, uh, for instance, how you would do it in real life. You know, but with makeup, you apply your foundation first. So that to me would be like your base color and, you know, things like that. And then you put your eyeshadow and stuff on and, you know, your mascara and like you, you, there's a certain like process that people have to apply like what they want makeup wise and i kind of think of gradient mapping and working with um layers as kind of the same the, the same technique and the same style and the same kind of idea so that's why i will do makeup and stuff last generally unless it's uh um, you know like eyeshadow or something like that and i need to kind of map out how i'm gonna do some of my eyeshadow and and stuff like that um but so I'll do that, you know, with with like some of the women or the uh, people who like to wear makeup. Atticus is a different kind of story. So Atticus, Atticus very much 
his facial features very much resemble a lot of my own. So one of the things that I really, really love about dark skin, you know, besides the fact that I'm dark skinned and I love being dark skinned, but I love that you can play. There's a lot of play within darker skin tones. And I feel like people don't really talk about this a lot, but there's a lot more play and give in darker skin tones, I think, than there is in lighter skin tones. And one of the things that I always like to do, especially with Atticus, I'm so glad that I added this, is that his bottom lip is more pink than the rest of you know his his skin tone so like with his bottom lip there's some things that i can do and kind of mess with in terms of of the coloration and how i do the shading shadows the lighting than i won't do with the rest of his skin um and then i can add in uh some you know not too much like quote unquote warmth but i can add a little bit of warmth into his lips where it is in his cheeks, even though I'm, I am adding in warmth, it's gonna be a different kind of color warmth. So I feel like my palette opens up exponentially uh, with darker skin tones, because there's a lot that I can do and a lot of play that you can give a lot of these darker skin tones. So I'm kind of jumping back and forth between the two of them now. I'm kind of messing with the warmth on Layerer right now, and then I'll go back to the warmth on Atticus. One of the things that I really, really like about Atticus's design is that it is a piecemeal that I saw, I've, I've seen pieces of this on different kind of fashion websites. And so I decided, I was like, man, I kind of like the half hoodie look and I really want to piece that together and marry it with, you know, some other pieces that I think would be, you know, and like de deconstruct it and kind of put it together in a, in a way that it's, it's functional, but it's kind of like, well, why is it, why is it functional like that? And so like his design was very much trying to make it look like somebody who's always on the move, always hiking, always traveling, but also kind of like a fashionable kind of, uh, kind of look to him. And, uh, we switched to Zolani and Micah at this point, as you can see, I'm doing the same thing with them. So I'm, I'm doing my base colors now, making sure the base colors are in there. And then I'm going to go in and do, and, uh, assign all the, uh, gradients and make sure, you know, the gradients are actually like coming through and shining through. And so the reason why it looks like this is I've actually turned off the shadow layers. And now I'm gonna turn the shadow layers back on and start kind of messing with them and kind of working with them. These pe uh, so the two of these pictures, I also started doing some slightly different um, things with them. So on the first one, I did all of my shading on green. This one, even though the shading, even though the green was there, I'm still, sh I'm still shading on a shadow layer that is above the base green. But I turn the color on first because I kind of want to see how how my color choices are affecting the look. And I can't tell you and I think this is a good example. I can't tell you which method is better because to me, both pictures came out really, really good. Um, this one, obviously, you can see the color change and see how your values change and affect the picture faster than the other method. But the other method, I will tell you. Uh, where you just, you don't even put the gradients there yet. So this one, I did the gradients first and then I'm doing the shading. The other one, I did the shading first and then I put the gradients. With the other one, with Lyra and Atticus, on this specific, uh, you know, this specific technique, you're able to do your shading and your lighting without ever worrying about what the colors are. And it, I think it's one of those things like it can put you in a mindset to essentially just enjoy the ride of of drawing or painting without having to sit back and go oh man okay so how is this color going to affect this color and how is this color going to affect this color you can literally just draw and it's almost like back you know back back in the day even i won't even just say back in the day like because we do it now too but when you're sitting in class and you're just doodling and you just have your number two pencil and you don't have access to a whole you know bevy of other kind of tools you can you just you draw and you just sit there and you draw and you you sketch and then you shade you have this one tool and that's what that's what 
using this technique can kind of take you back to that, but you're doing it digitally now. Whereas the way that I did Micah and Zolani is kind of, now you're in art class. Now you have access to all the other stuff that you want to work with. And you can actually grab all of that up. And as soon as you finish your sketch, you can be like, I'm going to skip. I don't want to do, you know, line art and this, that, and the other. I'm just going to do, I'm going to do color. And I'm going to do my shading right now. And you can, because you have access to all the tools. And so even if you're sitting there for a minute and trying to choose the next color and trying to decide what you're going to do next and how to, how to blend it and everything, you have that access. So I kind of, kind of liken the two uh, approaches to the technique like that. Um, and as you can see, I'm working on on Micah. Their, Micah's design, their design is one of my favorite designs that I've ever made of a character. They are piecemeal stuff that I have... I will honestly say that Micah, they were probably the biggest redesign. Whereas Zolani, I feel, was the smallest reason redesign. Zolani's redesign was mostly in her hair, was how I approached her hair and her hairstyle. Almost everything else about Zolani is dead smack the original. Micah has been changed minimum six times. So Micah's, Micah's design, what their design is now, is so different than what it was before that it's very weird when I go back and I look at their original desi design for that very reason. So, you know, it, like it's it's funny just kind of like looking at this and kind of talking about it because I'm I'm remembering what these characters look like previously and now seeing what they're going in, you know, what they're looking like as we go into uh, me working on the Talia comics. And so we're back, you know, obviously back on Leyra and Atticus. Um, I'm working on some of Atticus's stuff right now. I'm going, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between them. For Leyra, I've done some lighting. I can see some of the lighting that I've done there. Atticus, I'm going to be working on lighting. I'm kind of like messing with some stuff. I One of the things I do like to do is mess with tonal values as I continue going um, and kind of changing how deep and how dark I want certain sections to look and I want certain uh, items and objects to look in the scene and what I want more forward and what I want more back and this is you know you'll see that in like this piece as I'm like working on it and especially on the piece with Micah and Zolani they have Micah and Zolani have a lot of shiny things um, Micah they have two crystal foci that they actually use. That's how they use their magic. Um, and they, they glow like a kind of pinkish purplish. So there's a lot of like glowing that happens with Micah's character and uh, things around them and, and stuff like that. Whereas Zolani is very much, they have a muted white, almost eggshell white. Uh, outfit that they wear with yellow and so a lot of their magic displays in bright flashes of, of white light and yellow swords and things like that so it's they very much have a lot of the the light spectrum whereas Atticus his light his uh, magic glows greenish um, a lot of the time greenish yellows browns it's more earthy and Lyra though I have shown Lyra with more of the flames in the pictures that I've drawn of her when she's using her magic. Um, Layla has access to all elemental magic. And so with Layla, she can use pretty much anything. Fire, water, she can, you know, use earth, uh, has control over the air, things like that. So there's a bevy of different colors and spectrums that show up with Layla. The thing is, is that uh, both of these two characters, Layla and Atticus, don't typically show their magic off and aren't flashy because they don't want to be and they don't need to be. Whereas uh, Blades of Oa, in this case, Micah and Zolani, very much need people to know who they are, what their magic is capable of, so on and so forth. Of course, the symbol that they typically wear everywhere on their person or something or an item that they have also tells people who they are. Um, and so this, you know, with, with this story, it's like super magic heavy. Things like your your uh, 
your iconography and magic you use is very paramount to who you are. Um, like I said, there's checks and balances. So Lyra, for instance, is on the run, even though she can use magic because the magic she uses, which is elemental magic, is weak against the magic that Blades of Oa use, which is spiritual magic, which is what Zolani and Micah have access to. So they're able to typically go and get people who use elemental magic. Um, and then with um, Atticus, Atticus uses a form of magic that is called emotional magic. And emotional magic is the counter to spiritual magic, but it is very weak against elemental magic. So if Lyra and Atticus were ever in a fight, Lyra would win by default magic wise. Um, and then you know, he can he can kind of uh, put Zolani and Micah in their place. So it's kind of it's kind of that back and forth. It's going to be a good storyline. As you see, see, I'm finishing up these two uh, doing some of the lighting, kind of throwing some magic stuff out. I think I'm going to end up photo bashing some of the elemental stuff. Um, and and depending on the style that I draw in, um, I might just draw some of the simpler versions. I am, the stuff that I'm kind of drawing lately has been cell shaded. So it has not been this gradient mapping stuff. This is more for like the tent pole. This is going to be for, um, you know, when I want to put out prints and I want to have some really just some very finely detailed painted stuff. These are, these are kind of the techniques that I'm going to be using. I still use them. I still mess with them. I still have done stuff in this you know using this style and using these techniques but i've actually been doing more cell shaded stuff it's a little bit faster for me uh, with a comic the comic is cell shaded if you want to make a comic while i don't think you should try to paint your comic i've seen some gorgeously painted comics uh, i think cell shading is the way to go especially if you're the only person if you have somebody doing pencils and you're doing all the rendering and you know and stuff like that cool have at it but if it's you doing from start to finish i would say cell shaded is the way to go cell shaded has sped up my workflow um and that's not to say that cell shaded doesn't look just um, amazing but also if you're trying to get a comic out super fast that's the way you got to do it um but yeah, as you can see, like with this, with Zolani, I'm working on her lighting now, kind of putting stuff on the shoulders and uh, messing with her gloves and things like that. Micah, I'm going to come back to Micah and do them as well. Make sure that they're nice and well lit and, uh, you know, put these characters kind of together. So these are the it's not character sheets because I'm not showing you a full turn. I'm not showing different things, moods, anything like that. This is almost this is more like character splash art a little bit. Um, not necessarily pinup style, but kind of leaning that way for you to get an idea of who these characters are, uh, what their motivations might be, what their personalities might be a little bit, you know, coming through um, things like their magic. Uh, so as you can see on on Micah, I've done some of the lighting on them. I'm going to do some of the uh, some of the lighting on Zulani kind of get some of the magic glowing and get some of that glow, you know, popping off a little bit on both of these characters. Uh, that way they, they match Lyra and Atticus. But, you know, this is this is one of those things where it's it's a technique that I absolutely love. I love the fact that I'm, I'm now capable of doing this. When I first envisioned these characters, I was not capable of doing this. Now I am. And it, it makes me extremely happy that I can share this with you guys. Here's the finished product of both sets of characters. You know, we have Lyra, we have Atticus, um, we have Zolani, and we have Micah. These are my four characters for my comic series, Talia. And I hope you guys will pop over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash the prize winning squid. Check out what I have up there. Uh, don't forget the website art by the prize winning squid.com it's you know not brand new but it's newly designed uh i'm glad you guys came through watch the speed paint i hope that i can you know give you guys some inspiration and you guys liked some of the gradient mapping that you've seen uh, and if you guys want some more techniques just ask hopefully i can you know provide those things and i'm gonna get out of here you guys make sure you stay moist I'm the prize winning squid and I will see you guys 
next time.